everybody and welcome to episode 12 of This Old Knit. I'm your host, Nina, otherwise known as Ine on Ravelry and Pinterest. And I'm doing take two of the uh, podcast today because we had um, a fairly large thunderstorm roll through. So um, it was kind of loud and I didn't want there to be a bunch of that kind of ambient noise going on um, while I'm podcasting, although you can probably hear Megwin in the background imitating the ambulance going by, so we may have ambient noise anyway. I have Plonk with me today. I'm not sure if he's showing up on camera or not, um, but when I'm upstairs and the door is shut, he actually barks quite a lot, so I didn't want him to wake up Joshua so I brought him up with me. So he's just hopefully gonna sit here and I'll probably annoy the heck out of him as I'm leaning over and grabbing things because I don't have a table to st sit stuff on up here because my camera is on the table that I normally would sit stuff on. It looks like the sun's gonna come out, that's good. Um, so anyway, I have had a good week, a busy week, and I took off Friday and then today from work and we went camping so we went we left on Friday and we came back yesterday and I wanted to have a day to kind of reset the system as I call it so having time to do laundry catch up on um, sleep because <laughs> um, usually when we come home from camping we kind of all just take a shower and then we nap a whole bunch so um, same thing happened this time, but now I have another day to kind of get things back in order and ready for the week. So my husband just came back from grocery shopping. I started my lunches for this week. I am making a big uh, crock pot of uh, Tex-Mex quinoa kind of thing that I like to make. Um, it's really good and healthy and it's very easy. So keeping it low key, that's going now. And I figured I'd take a little bit of time to podcast with all of you. So hopefully I'll be able to get this episode up um, later today and you all will be able to watch it. So anyway, while we were camping, I worked a lot on my blanket and I also cast on a pair of socks for Josh. Um, those are pretty much the two things I did um, because it was very, very rainy and wet so we were in the tent with the kids a ton so I had to entertain them I didn't get a lot of knitting time but anyway first things first I will um, show you what I have on Josh's socks it's not very much um, just a ribbing I do um, 72 stitch socks on 2.75 millimeter needles for him. Those seem to fit and he really likes the Patton's Croy sock yarn, so this is Patton's Croy. Um, this is the Rag Shades colorway blue brown marl. So it has kind of a dark blue, a lighter blue, a dark brown, and a very light beigey um, twisted with blue strand. Um, I like their rag shades a lot. I think that they're really pretty and they've just really hit on great color palettes in uh, all the different rag shades. I own all of them because I love them so much. Um, but I bought a lot of them to make socks for Josh because he really likes them. Oh, sorry. So my plan to do with these, I'm doing just a basic rib and then I think on the body of the sock I'm going to use the blueberry waffle socks stitch pattern and then normal uh, heel and toe that I do for him all the time. Um, but I want to see if a kind of more stretchy ribby sock will fit him better. Um, he likes the ones that I made for him last time that were pure stockinette in this yarn. Um, but yeah, why not try it? And here's one with the ball band. I don't have the ball band for the other one because I was burn I burned it because um, when we're camping we um, usually have a huge fire going so if it's something that I don't need to pack out I do not pack it out so I burnt the one I had because I knew I had two more balls of it with the ball band on so if you haven't tried it 
Patton's Croy Rag Shades. I highly recommend them. And, oh, I did work on my Hermione's Everyday Socks. Kind of a story with those. You'll notice there's no needles in these. And the reason for that is that I feel like I didn't make the leg long enough. So I did it. Um, I was comparing it to a pair of socks that I was wearing at the time. And um, I worked the heel. And I don't really feel like you can tell how something is going to fit until you finish the heel flap and then kind of turn the heel to see um, where it's truly going to hit when you have it snugged up on your foot. And since I did this ribbing in uh, bigger needles than the rest of the sock, I feel like um, it's actually a little bit loose on the top. So um, yeah, I think what I can do to fix that is I can just make them have a longer leg. I have plenty of yarn for that. So I'm going to rip back this um, heel turn and the heel flap and just add maybe another maybe make them that long so maybe another inch two inches to it and then I'll try again because um, I feel like if this is higher up on my leg it'll be fine so that's my plan so I just need to rip them back so I took the needles out of those so that I could rip that back and I just haven't had a chance to do it yet and um, then like I said I also worked on my blanket so, um, sides are taking longer now. So I worked from this marker across to here. So I'm ready to do another mitered corner right now. So I stopped so I could podcast. Um, but yeah, still enjoying it. Um, it's a really nice mindless knit, so it was great to knit it by the campfire. I got a um, headlamp, um, a black diamond, shoot, I'm forgetting the name of the one I got, but the brand name is Black Diamond um, Headlamp, but I was using that to knit when it was dark, and that was very nice. The one night that we could actually sit out by the fire, which was Friday night, I did get to knit some on the blanket, so that was very fun. And then, um, I feel like I'm whizzing through these things, um, my rainbow socks. So, one of our group members, Little Watermelon, kept talking about how much she loved these socks. And she was like, you're going to get back to them, right? You're going to still do them, right? And um, so she convinced me to um, try and see what I could do with them. And originally, like I had said, I was going to rip them back um, and re-knit them. And then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, well, I'd like to have this kind of tool in my arsenal, if you will, to be able to fix a too tight cast on but not have to re-knit everything. Because what if I knit a sweater sometime and the cast on is too tight? Way better to experiment on a pair of socks and maybe lose a little bit of the sock than potentially have to re-knit um, a, a big portion of a sweater. So um, what I did was I um, looked up in this book, When Bad Things Happen to Good Knitters, and I've had this for a really long time. It's been out um, for quite a long time. Um, but it basically walks you through anything you can imagine going wrong with your knitting. This talks about it. Um, so yeah, in 2007, which was actually the year that I learned how to knit. So I've been knitting for about eight years now. Um, so I got this pretty much as soon as I learned to knit. And it's a really great uh, book. So it has tons of, you can see pictures. Um not photos, just drawings, and little tips and tricks. Um, it goes through everything. I, th I think it's great for an experienced knitter as well as a beginning knitter. Um, has stuff about kind of knitting on the fly, making a gauge swatch, 
a good way to get to gauge and this is actually the way I make my gauge swatches so I do um, a certain amount if I'm kind of between sizes of needles that I like I do um, one gauge swatch and I put the amount of pearl bumps that correspond with the number of the needle size and then I just transition to another one do the pearl bumps, transition to another one, do the pearl bumps, and then when you wash and block it, you can easily see which one is the one that you like the best, and you don't have to go, well crap, that one doesn't work now, I need to knit another gauge swatch. You've got them all together. So if you're kind of between needle sizes, I highly recommend that. Um, and I got that from here. Um, how to substitute in yarns. How to avoid running out of yarn when you cast on. How to bind off cables. Adjusting a pattern. Um, most commonly used abbreviations. In case if somebody forgets to put their abbreviations in their pattern, which I have bought some pattern that that was the case. Um, yeah, just all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I digress. Little book review for you. So in here, I looked up what to do if my cast on is too tight and you finish the item. So I think it's in don't, oh yeah, the section is called don't let finishing finish you off. So there was a section that was talking about um, what to do if your cast on is too tight. It mentioned if it's on a sweater, if it's on a hat. If it's um, on socks, it's said to refer to the sweater one. So um, it's suggested that I take apart my cast on. Either cut it off or if I can unravel it to unravel it. So what I did was I unraveled it and I picked each stitch out. It took me about an hour to fix it, um, but much less time than it would have taken me to re-knit the whole sock. And then um, I took that same yarn and I did a Jenny surpri surprisingly stretchy bind off. So I don't really care for this bind off a lot of times because it flares out like this, but in this case it works really well. Um, it doesn't look like that when it's on. It just always looks weird when it's not on a body or a foot. I do use it on the bottom of sweaters because um, I think it's, it's just, a good one to use. So um, I started out binding off in pattern, but really if you're working the opposite direction in ribbing from what you had worked the piece, um, it's flipped. So I just said forget about it. I'm just going to knit all, work all of them as though they're knit stitches. So I think I did to maybe like here and then I started just doing it as though it were knit stitches um, and it was faster that way. And uh, I don't think you can really tell the difference. So you can see it flares out slightly, but it fits really well. I did run out of yarn right here from my cast on yarn. And then I pulled a little bit from the outside of the ball, which just so happened to be purple, which is the color I was working. So I was very excited about that. Um, so yeah, so now I have them back on the needles. I've started working on them again. And now knowing what I know about the other pair, I'm definitely going to make the leg longer um, than I had made it originally because I like my legs to be a little bit longer on my socks. Um, so I'm really happy with them. I love the colors. I think they're so vibrant and rich and um, the yarn is knitting up really well. I love it in this pattern. So I'm happy that I was able to make them work and now I know how to do that for the future. So. I'm glad that I kind of bit the bullet and did it because um, I learned something new and I love learning new things. That is what I'm all about. So this, if you are just joining me, is Vesper Sock Yarn in the Rainbow Love colorway and I am knitting them on 2.5 millimeter needles. Needle magic looping, which I usually don't particularly care for. But I don't do a lot of 2.5 mil knitting, like I said, so I didn't want to buy two um, Addy Cirques sock rockets because they're kind of pricey. 
and it's not something I'm going to use very often. But I'm going to take a drink because my throat is a little bit sore. The cottonwood seeds have started to fly and look beautiful and taunt me because I can't go out in them, basically. It's only a few weeks though and then we'll be through my allergy season and grass and um, like weeds, which are summer and fall. No problem, just spring for me. And this was one of my Mother's Day gifts from my mother-in-law and father-in-law. So it is the San Francisco mug from the Starbucks You Are Here collection. So this one's kind of plain, actually. It's got the ocean and it's got uh, the Golden Gate Bridge rising up out of the fog, some seabirds, and um, a little bit of the skyline, so like Koi Tower and stuff. And um, there's a few small sailboats right there as well. I don't know if Koi Tower is actually on here. Never mind. I'm wrong. Koi Tower is not on here. It's um, that tr really tall, like, triangular, triangular building. And I now forget what that building is. It's like a financial center, I think. Yeah. I don't know. It's in the financial district in San Francisco. So anyway, I really like this one because obviously my husband was born in San Francisco and I worked there for many years. Um, so I do love that city and uh, it's happy or I'm happy to have one of a place that I've actually been. And I'm drinking the um, Yogi Egyptian licorice tea, which Kristen has got me completely addicted to. Kristen Bollenvine from the Yarngasm podcast. Please check her podcast out. Um, oh, the other thing I worked on. On the way to camping, and kind of a little bit this week, I did some more um, of my cross stitch. So my once upon a time cross stitch. Take it out of the hoop so you can see it better. And I am slowly but surely going back and working the um, the squares that I was almost done with. I had several that I was almost done with, and for whatever reason, I just moved on to the next one. Probably because this was a monthly subscription last year, so every month you would get a new um, square. Which is very tempting, because you get the new one, and if you're not done with the old one, you want to work on the new one, and... That's probably exactly why I have some that are almost all the way done, but not done. So, there's a little bit of a hoop mark because I left it on there overnight, which I try not to do. But I was lazy, and I did. So I worked on the September square. There's dog fur on it, because plonky sheds. I'm sure you guys can hear him snoring. He's really loud. Um, I have the dog fur in my mouth. Lovely. Um, yep. So let me hold it up here. So I had done pretty much everything on this square, except for I hadn't done this bird. I hadn't finished the flower basket because it was really annoying. There's like four stitches um, of each flower that are all different colors. So it's a lot of color changes really close to each other. And then they all have those little yellow middles. And um, what else did I do? Oh, I just didn't do her bow. I don't know what I was thinking there. Like her whole head was done, her face, her um, the back stitch was done. Everything except for that little bow. I don't know why I didn't do that little bow. That's silly. So basically all I have left for this square is to do the little face and beak of this bird. To do one more flower. 
and this little bit of her tower that I had run out of that color for and I hadn't cut a new one yet. So she's almost done, which is great. And then I worked more on the Bremen Town Square, which is what I had been working on most of the prior week. Um, but I did the chicken's head, the cat body, the dog body. Mm, trying to think what else. I think I did this, the sticks for the flags. Pretty sure I did. And um, maybe some more of the donkey. I can't remember if I had done that last time I showed it. Um, but I, it's, it's really coming along, I feel like. I feel much closer to being done with it. Uh, I should probably work on this one too, the Thumbelina Square. Because all I have left for that is putting July on there. Doing some back stitching on the shell. And eyes on the fish. I don't know why I didn't do the eyes on them. Well, I do know because it's just one little X of black and it's really annoying to do it all by itself there because you have to be really careful with ends and stuff for black so that it doesn't show on the background with when you mat it. Um, if you haven't trimmed your black ends they will show as being kind of dark and make it look a little bit dirty. Um, so anyway it's a little more fiddly. But everybody up here is done. <laughs> so basically you can tell when I went back to work from maternity leave because <laughs> this was all last year and um, here I had one child one child one child one child oh I had a second one but I was home 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 for the first two weeks and then I went back to work so yeah you can tell exactly when that happened but up till then I was really doing well so I am super excited about it though I think it's so pretty um, and it's going to look really great in Megwin's room. And she loves fairy tales so much. So she um, gets very excited about this guy. And uh, just talking about every square and the things that are in the squares. And what they're doing and what happens in the stories. And she'll look at it and say, let's read that story tonight for bedtime. So... Um, it already has created a lot of really good memories and memories that I hope to be able to pass on to her later and I hope that she'll keep this and take it with her um, as she grows up. So that is that and hmm, I don't think I worked on my Halloween town at all since last time we spoke. Um, I should show it with natural light, though, because the lighting has always been really awful. So, um, you can hopefully see it better now that these are, like, really pretty, like, bright magenta. Not, they were showing up as kind of a purple, a weird purple. And then this purple is a hand-painted yarn. The green grass is also a hand painted yarn, so it variegates between kind of an olive and a yellowy green. Um, the pink is also. I love this little owl, he's like my favorite in the whole thing. Although I do really like this little pumpkin, the jack o' lantern as well. So, yeah, this one's almost done. I'm not going to do the bottom where it says Halloween Town, I'm just going to leave it as a little cityscape and maybe put it on a little knitting bag that I can carry around in the October time frame. I'll put those back in there. Um, so then I had one thing that I picked up. Um, oh no, I should show my shirt, my top, because I did get more done. And this did weird stuff to the camera last time I saw. Boop. Okay. There it is. It's very wrinkly because it's been laying in my bag. 
So I think what I'm going to do maybe later on tonight is I'm going to take this off of the needles and put it on um, a really long cable so that I can um, try it on and see if I'm ready to start the little bottom part. There's just a couple of rows that aren't just plain stockinette because uh, I think I'm really close to it being the length that I want it to be. And I don't think I showed this before. I can't remember where I got these stitch markers, but it totally matches my knitting. <laughs> that was unintentional, but it, I love it. Every time I knit by it, I'm like, oh, look at that. It looks so pretty with that. So the other one's just plain. But yeah, so hopefully that will be done very soon. Because once I get that bottom part done, the sleeve should take no time at all. That should be smooth sailing. Not very many stitches on needle at that point. Okay. All right, so I was getting ready to say that Megwin and I, since I had the day off today, we went to um, Joann's. And uh, I don't know what it is about that store, but I feel like I can do a million crafts when I'm in it. I don't know how you all feel about that. Like if you go to craft stores and you're like, oh, that looks interesting. I'll try that. Or I could totally do that. That's not that hard. Completely forgetting you don't have all the time in the world. But um, we got a small like kit to make a sun catcher, um, which I made those all the time when I was a kid. Um, there's like these little beads in them that you uh, put into the different sections and then you melt it in the oven and then you can hang it up. So we got her a little T-Rex one because she loves dinosaurs and she's really excited about it. So I said we'd do that together later today. Um, so maybe after I finish recording I will do that with her because uh, Joshua's sleeping and it's probably not a baby safe activity. <laughs> And then I got two balls of Patton's Croy Socks FX. And does this have a... Oh, yep. It's called Celestial Colors. It's really beautiful. It's purples and teals together. And it's almost like the, um, the rag shades, I think, that it has this marled look. So it has two plies and one ply is one color and the other ply is a different color and they sort of almost barber pull through which is that, that's all I can think of just like with hand spun when they do barber pulling that's what this yarn does so I had seen Danny from Little Bobbins knits I think it was Danny had made a pair of blueberry waffle socks in Patton's Croy. I think so. Um, and I really loved them, so I wanted to make a pair as well. And I think hers were in Patton's Croy. So I'm going to be a total copycat and I'm going to do some of those as well. And several of the podcasters that I watch have been taking breaks, and it's so sad. I miss all of you guys. So the In the Snit gals have been taking a break. I guess they've been really busy with teaching stuff. Um, Molly from a homespun house just had a new baby, so she's obviously taking a break. Um, but I, I feel you yeah, on that one. Like when you go from one to two kids, um, yeah, it's a big leap. And especially having a newborn in the house, um, it reminds you of all of the attention that they need and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's very time consuming to have two because you want to spend time with both of them, obviously. So one is, yeah, you get to spend some time with them, then you spend some time by yourself. But two, I think is a little bit more, you're spending a lot of your time with um, kind of splitting between them. And you mothers of lots more than two, I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I would think that the other kids probably have to help and pitch in more um, because otherwise, like, there's only two parents. So 
how do you do it? <laughs> I don't know. And I have several friends that have four or five children, so they seem to manage it somehow, but yeah, I think I'd be crazy. I don't know. Um, so anyway, Molly is taking a break, and then um, Danny, who I just mentioned, um, who's Little Bobbins from Little Bobbins Knits, she is also taking a little break. I don't know if she's going to be gone longer than a week, but she's usually a weekly podcaster, and last week she did not do a podcast, so miss you, Danny, and Plunky misses seeing Bobbins, or Bobbin, yeah, Bobbins, Bobbin, her little chihuahua. I think it's Bobbin. And, um, who else is not? Oh, Le Lena from uh, Wee Bit Nitty. I'm just catching up with her podcast, and then she's been having issues um, that they're trying to figure out with, like, itching and allergic reactions and stuff like that. So uh, that just sounds terrible, and I feel so bad for her. Um, but hopefully she's going to get it all figured out and she'll be back to podcasting and back in good health because she makes beautiful stuff and she cracks me up when I watch her podcast. So um, I'm slowly consuming the older videos knowing that there's not going to be new ones for a little while. And then um, Kay and Dan from the Bakery Bears have said that they're not going to podcast as often because, um, you know, I think their, their work is picking up a bit so they're not going to have as much time to do a podcast and theirs is like very well produced um, you can tell a ton of time goes into editing it and it's just wonderful I feel like I learned something every time and uh, they just had their one year anniversary, which I did not get to record a little video for um, both Megwin and Joshua just didn't let me have a um, time to sneak away and do it because the deadline was during the week and I just I didn't have time to do it but I do wish them both a happy one year um podcaster anniversary, not pod anniversary, um and many more hopefully because they're hilarious and this most recent episode I have been cracking up like multiple times while I've been watching it so I'm maybe halfway through and I'm kind of slowly consuming it again because I know that one won't be coming out for a while so anyway yeah sad that a lot of people have been are having to take a break but good timing it's spring going into summer so I get it a lot of people are busy and things are going on and hopefully everybody will be back to their schedules soon and um, I will miss you all so that is everything that I'm working on, everything that I got, which was just the one thing. <laughs> um, I did buy some other yarn through Etsy, but I'm waiting for it to ship to me. It's from a dyer in Russia um, called Wool Silk Lace. So I will let you know what I think of that when it comes in. Um, she said she uses a base that's very similar to Opal. And um, she makes these really pretty stripe or self-striping yarns where like it'll have a solid stripe. Um, the ones I got were ones on a sparkle base and ones on a regular base. Um, it's white with like a variegated stripe in between, like a hand paint. And then the other one is uh, black, but it's got a sparkle. And then it has that variegated stripe in it. So I think it's called like fireworks or something. And um, shoot. the other one is like kaleidoscope. So I'm really excited to get those. And um, they're, they're showing that they're going to come nearer to the end of May. So probably in like two weeks I'll have them to show to you. And maybe I'll have a pair of socks done by then so that I can cast one of those on and um, make some more socks. So yeah, um, like I said, we went camping. That was really fun, but I would call it a moderately successful camping trip. The reason I would say that is that um, because of all the rain. So we got there on Friday and 
it was nice on Friday, very sunny and beautiful. And so we got our tent set up, we got dinner made, and then another um, couple came with their two children. They had twins, a boy and a girl, um, one of whom had um, autism, I believe. I don't know how severe it was, but um, he was very interested in like our camping vans. So, and our baby, he loved Joshua. So he came over pretty regularly and visited with us and asked about our fans and wanted to see the baby and, um, and that was fine. And then the little girl, Molly, her name was Molly, uh, Megwin just played with her nonstop the entire weekend. So that was great. Um, she was outside a lot, even when it was like raining really hard, she was out there like a trooper playing. So Saturday, it started to cloud over and we went and got a hike in. So we did about a three mile hike, I think. And it was beautiful, it was really fun. I forgot my camera though, so I have no pictures of it. <laughs> I don't have any pictures of the whole weekend really, other than a video uh, that I took of Megwin on the drive back where she was just randomly in the back seat singing because she likes to sing about things that she's doing or things she's thinking about, which I think is really funny. So I just kind of sneak. Okay. Anyway, sorry, I didn't delete my last podcast from the memory card. So I just ran out of space. So I had to restart. Um, but basically, after we got back from our hike, it rained nonstop all day on Saturday and um, it maybe stopped for a little while Saturday night but uh, my husband Josh had a really bad headache like basically a migraine so we went and got him some medicine but between that and kind of fighting with the rain I said let's just not even bother with the um, with making food so we just went and got pizza I stayed with the baby and uh, Josh and Megwin went and got pizza and uh, they came back and after him having um, some Advil and uh, drinking a Diet Coke, he felt better, but basically Saturday was being stuck in the tent, which I don't like with camping. I want to be kind of outside. I want to only go in the tent for sleeping or for obviously changing the baby or changing clothes, but I want to be outside. If I'm camping, I want to be outside. I don't want to be trapped in the tent. So it was unfortunate, but we made the best of it. We had a uh, board game. So we had Candy Land and we had another game that's, what's it called? Race to the Treasure. I'll have to show it sometime on the podcast because it's a cooperative game. Um, that you're kind of playing against these little troll cards to see who can get to the finish first and you have to pick up keys and or sorry they're ogres and there's ogre snacks and it's really fun. I'll try to put a link to it in the show notes because if you have kids it's a great one for them because they can play it by themselves like you can play it with one person or you can play it with lots more people so I really like it. So we brought both of those because I knew that it might rain. We also had a deck of cards so we did Crazy A's, we did Go Fish, um, but then Megwin basically just went back out and played with her friend. She didn't care that it was raining and uh, we just tried to keep it low key because of my husband's headache so I didn't want to just leave him alone in the tent. Um, and then Sunday, it stopped raining for long enough for us to do breakfast, to get up and cook breakfast and make coffee, and then it started raining again. So we had to put all of our stuff um, away in the rain, so it's all still really wet. So tomorrow, we will have to uh, set it back up in the backyard and um, let it dry maybe for a day or two. And there were also a couple of places where we had some leaks, just minor drips, but I want to get back out there with this, the tent sealer and seal up a couple of the seams that it looks like I missed when we first got the tent. We've had the tent for two years now, but um, we've never been in like that intense of rain before. So it's good because it did reveal some of those places where I need to treat it, but it wasn't very fun. So yeah, Friday was fun. Part of Saturday was fun. The hike was really fun. I, we had a great time with that. And um, yeah, Sunday morning was fun. So 
yeah, overall it was good and Megwin had a good time. She got to play with another little friend and so that was nice. So anyway, um, I am going to sign off now and um, please come and join the group on Ravelry. Feel free to chat, tell me what you're working on. I love to hear that kind of stuff and I often find inspiration from seeing what other people are working on. And I will try to type up the show notes this week. I have them written out for last week. I just have to go and type them into the thread. It just takes me a little bit of time to link everything. And I usually watch my podcast twice, which is really awesome and weird watching yourself. Um, I watch myself once, or I watch it once before I upload it to make sure there's nothing strange um, or things that I need to cut. And then I watch it again once I've uploaded it to actually write out the uh, the show notes and what I reference. So um, I will try to get those done this week and I'll try to type out last week's just in case if you're interested in any of the things that I mentioned. It's nice to be able to just click through and not have to um, search all around. So um, anyway, I hope everyone has a great week and I will be back to probably my normal podcasting schedule next week that I'll record either on Saturday or Sunday. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys soon and happy knitting. Bye-bye.